When it comes to traveling in Europe, everybody knows about the popular destinations like France, Spain, Portugal, Greece. There really is so many places to visit in Europe. In this video, we're going to be ranking our top five underrated countries that we visited in Europe. And before we get into it, let us introduce ourselves. We're Samantha and Keelan, and we've been traveling the world for four years now. Yes, we have been to some incredible places, but we want to talk about some countries that have slipped under the radar for tourists when you're planning your trip to Europe. In at number five, we have Bosnia. Bosnia is a country we absolutely loved, and to be honest with you, we didn't know what to expect. It's nestled in the heart of the Balkans. Bosnia and Herzegovina is a hidden gem brimming with breathtaking landscapes, rich history and vibrant culture. The charming cities like Sarajevo and Mostar offer a captivating blend of Ottoman and Austro-Hungarian architecture, while the warm hospitality of the Bosnian people makes every visit unforgettable. Whether you're enjoying ancient castles, enjoying some delicious traditional cuisine or wandering through the lovely markets, Bosnia is definitely a destination that you need to visit. What, what's your name? Merima. Merima. Nice! Nice to meet you! Nice to meet you <laughs> as well! And thank you for pronouncing my name! No problem! Uh, <laughs> we absolutely fell in love with Sarajevo and still to this day it's one of our favourite places that we've ever visited. If you're a history buff you will definitely love this city. When you visit Sarajevo there's so much to see and there's so much to learn. Some facts you may or may not know is that Sarajevo is the location of the assassination of Franz Ferdinand which led to World War I. You can also visit the old abandoned site of the Winter Olympics. Now, as you may know, the city was destroyed in the Bosnian War in the 90s with plenty of memorials to this terrible situation seen around the city. In fact, Sarajevo endured the longest siege of a capital city in modern warfare. Today, Sarajevo is a dynamic and bustling city known for its rich cultural heritage and lively art scene. Sarajevo's transformation from a war-torn city to a symbol of peace and resilience is a testament to the spirit of its people of this great country. Another must-visit place that you have to go to if you're in Bosnia is Mostar. Mostar is a beautiful little city found about 125 kilometers south of Sarajevo. Here you will see the iconic Starry Mosque, which is a stunning Ottoman era bridge. In the summer, you can actually dive off the bridge, but because we visit in winter, we had to give that a miss. Another highlight for us was trying some traditional Bosnian food in a nearby restaurant with, of course, the best views. Honestly, one of the best desserts I've ever tried. Make sure to wander through the cobblestone streets of the old town where century old stone buildings, lively markets and charming cafes create a lovely atmosphere. If you're a coffee lover, you'll love Mostar. Number four, we have another Balkan country. In fact, it's known as the Pearl of the Balkans. Albania is so underrated, but we believe Albania will soon become a European powerhouse for tourists visiting Europe. Located right next to Greece, Albania sits along the coast of the Adriatic Sea. Albania's location make it a unique and picturesque destination. Saranda is a charming coastal town renowned for its stunning beaches, vibrant nightlife and rich historical sites. It's so close to Greece that you can actually see the island of Corfu in the distance. Saranda enjoys a warm Mediterranean climate that attracts visitors year round. Saranda is also a great place to visit some of the other popular sites in southern Albania. We rented a car and went on a little road trip to discover more of this beautiful country. Now, if you're in Albania, you have to visit Giro Castor. This is our favorite part of Albania and probably one of the most beautiful towns that we've ever visited. Giro Castor is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it's known as the City of Stone. Make sure to visit the fortress for incredible views of the city. The best part of Giro Castor for us is the Old Bazaar. Here you'll find the loveliest of people. First, here. Oh, thank you so much. No, first is for the girl, but... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Just, yeah, small bit for me. <laughs> <laughs> this maze of cobblestone streets lined with traditional stone houses, many of which have been converted into shops, cafes and guest houses. Giro Casta is definitely the real Albania. With its rich cultural heritage, stunning architecture and scenic beauty, this makes it a must-visit destination for anyone exploring Albania. If you come to Giro Castor, make sure you drop into Edmunds at Mele Guest House. This is without a doubt the best place to stay in Giro Castor. Tirana is Albania's capital city and a must-visit. Tirana's urban landscape is a fascinating mix of Ottoman, Italian and modern influences. Notable landmarks include Skanderbeg Square, this city's main hub. 
In recent years, Tirana has experienced significant growth and modernization, creating a colorful and vibrant city, continuously distancing themselves from the communist era. In fact, many of the street art that you see around the city was actually done by students in a bid to dress up the city with color. Again, if you're into your history, we'd recommend visiting the Bunk Art Museum. It's a converted bunker now open to tourists, giving us the chance to experience just what Albania was like during communist ruling by Enver Hodget. It's an interesting and sad experience, but it is one of the things in Tirana that we'd highly recommend to do. Also in Tirana, make sure to take the cable car up to the top of Doiti Mountain. Here you'll find amazing views of Tirana and an adventure park. For us, Albania is definitely a hidden gem in Europe and we'd highly recommend to visit. So make sure you stick on the list. Next up, we are heading to a colder climate and in at number three, it's Iceland. Iceland is incredible. It's actually hard to put it on an underrated list because it's so well known now and has become a popular place for people to visit. But it is still growing in tourism and rightly so, it's absolutely stunning. Now we visited Iceland in winter, so for some of you, our trip might turn you off. We have heard that in summer, Iceland is much more pleasant. However, we happen to love the snow and I'm sure a lot of you watching would also love a winter adventure. <laughs> we traveled around Iceland in a camper van and although some of you might think we would freeze, in actual fact, we were quite warm and toasty and it was such a fun way to see this beautiful country. Iceland is full of the most beautiful landscapes you will see anywhere on the planet. Look at that. That's insane. I feel like I'm walking on the moon or something. <laughs> Look at the sun just beaming down on it. It is beautiful, like proper beautiful. Visit volcanic craters, geysers, hot springs, glaciers and lava fields. This country has everything. The country sits on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge where the Eurasian and North American tectonic plates meet, resulting in high volcanic activity and geothermal features. For many tourists visiting Iceland, the Golden Circle would probably be the top attraction. A tour like this will show you some of the breathtaking scenery of Iceland, including the incredible Gullfoss Falls. Other must visits in Iceland should include the amazing waterfalls and beaches like Skogafoss Waterfall, Seljandafoss Waterfall and Diamond Beach. Truly unbelievable places to visit. And if you're feeling really adventurous, you can head to the east of Iceland and zip line across a glacier. Go! <laughs> this is a truly unique experience and one we'd highly recommend. Well, well, well. The drop. <laughs> the drop is so... It might seem scary, but it is an adrenaline rush. Iceland is just amazing. On to number two, and it's Iceland's neighbor, Norway. Norway may just be the most beautiful country we've ever been. And similar to Iceland, we feel that tourism is definitely on the up, but to us, it still doesn't feel like an obvious choice for visitors to Europe. I think it's fair to say that the cost of visiting Norway may be a factor. They were like 10 euro, a little bit over 10 euro each. But if you can get past that, Norway is definitely a must visit place in Europe. Similar to our trip in Iceland, we explored the country in a camper van. This gave us the freedom to see some beautiful places that are truly out of this world. One thing we definitely underestimated was how big Norway is. So yeah, we definitely advise you to plan what city you want to fly into. You will see such remarkable places all over the country. However, we did fly into Oslo, so we spent most of our time in the south of the country. Now, Oslo is a nice city, but for us, we found ourselves wanting to explore the beautiful countryside. Stavanger is a lovely city you'll find on the southwestern coast of Norway, known for its rich history and beautiful natural surroundings. It's a port city, so you'll find a lot of cruise ships may stop here to allow tourists to spend the day here. We love spending our time in Uvra Holmegate, Sorry about the pronunciation, but it basically translates to the colorful street and it's one of the top attractions in the sea. And also while you're there, make sure to check out the old town. It's absolutely stunning. Bergen is another place that you may be familiar with. It's one of Norway's most popular cities. We love Bergen. It's nestled between the fjords and the mountains on the Norwegian Western coast. It's also Norway's second largest sea. Make sure to check out the UNESCO World Heritage Site of Bergen. Here you'll see some traditional Norwegian architecture, which is gorgeous. Bergen is definitely a vibrant city with many places to grab a beer and enjoy the atmosphere. The highlight of Bergen for us was definitely taking the vernacular to the top of Mount Flying. Here you will see some incredible views of Bergen and the beautiful Norwegian landscape. This was an incredible experience. Speaking of incredible experiences, we have to mention the fjords. Now we have been lucky enough to travel to some unbelievable places, but the fjords probably top the list of the most beautiful things that we have ever seen. It's truly nature at its finest. 
We drove up the mountains of Norway to visit the Stegestein viewing point and wow, just spectacular. Norway could have easily been number one on this list and it's a place we'll definitely return to and we would highly recommend you make that trip to this beautiful country. So we are now at the number one spa. So we spent over three months in this country and with every place we visited, we fell more and more in love with it. So we think that the most underrated country to visit in Europe is... Drum roll! <laughs> Poland. Poland! If you've been watching our channel, you'll know that Poland is one of our favorite places. We spent the winter months there in this charming and picturesque country, exploring the breathtaking nature of Poland. There's so many amazing places to see and things to do in Poland. In our opinion, you must visit Gdansk, a gem on Poland's Baltic coast. This city is like a movie set with stunning architecture and such rich history. Make sure to pick up some amber jewelry in the old town. It's something that Gdansk is known for. Of course, you must try some traditional Polish food. One in particular is pierogi. These delightful dumplings are typically filled with a variety of ingredients such as potatoes, cheese, meat, mushroom and fruits. We loved exploring Poland by train. We literally went from north to south through public transport and it was such a cool and efficient way to travel the country. The two major cities in Poland are of course the capital city of Warsaw and Krakow. Warsaw is generally split between the old town and the new modern part of the city. We actually preferred the old town and one thing that we would highly recommend to do is a cruise down the Vistula River. It gives you really cool views of the city and it's great fun. Of course, Krakow is really popular for tourists and for good reason. The main square in Krakow is absolutely beautiful. It's definitely the heart and soul of the city, which is also the largest medieval town square in Europe, dating back to the 13th century. It's a vibrant hub where history, culture and modern life meet. Now, when you visit Krakow, it also gives you access to some of the other popular places to visit around that area. One example of this is the salt mines. This historic mine, operational since the 13th century, offers a unique glimpse into Poland's rich mining history and incredible craftsmanship. Another tourist attraction that's nearby is, of course, Auschwitz. It feels weird to call it an attraction. However, many tourists can visit from Krakow by organizing a tour from the sea. It takes about an hour on the bus and with the tour, you get a guide to walk through the camp and offer up information about its history. It's quite an eerie place to visit and at times it can get really difficult to take in, but it is a part of history, unfortunately, and it is worth a visit in our opinion. Another thing we have to mention, of course, if you visit Poland in winter time, you have to check out their Christmas markets. Yes, the Christmas markets are excellent throughout the country. Uh, one of the most famous ones is probably Krakow. It's right there in the main square and it is incredible. However, we have an even better one. It's in a place called Wrocław. So if you come to Poland for the Christmas market scene, definitely check out that one. We think it's the best. Oh yes. From Krakow, you can take a two and a half hour bus to a place called Zakopane. Zakopane is our favorite place in Poland and probably one of our favorite places in the world. Zakopane is a beautiful alpine town right on the border of Poland and Slovakia. We spent well over a month in this winter wonderland and we even stayed for Christmas. Cheers. Cheers. Clink. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. We spent Christmas day skiing from our incredible hotel, Hotel Banya. Zakopane is surrounded by the massive Tatra mountains and you can also go on some magical hikes through the snowy trails. For hikes, we'd highly recommend Morskioko. Morskioko is Poland's largest and most famous alpine lake. And in the winter, it actually freezes over, which is incredible to see. Also make sure to take the cable car to Kasprawi Wierch, a peak of the Tatra mountains. Here you will be blown away by the stunning panoramic views of both Poland and Slovakia. Just remember, if you go in the depths of winter, it can get a little tricky at times. You okay there? <laughs> Another couple of attractions you must do in Zakopane include a hike to this incredible waterfall. Again, in winter, this waterfall will freeze, which is just amazing to see. However, it's the hike itself that is the attraction. Breathe in the crisp, frosty air and admire the snow-covered landscapes. But it might be an idea to bring crampons for your shoes. You all right, Keelan? All right, Keelan has a trick here. I've cracked here. it. One leg in the heavy snow, one leg out. Ready? Don't forget your crampons. <laughs> I like those Egypts. 
The town itself is beautiful and here you can try the traditional Polish cheese known as Osipek, which actually comes from Zakopane. Zakopane is a magical place, especially around Christmas time. You can take the funicular up the mountain to a beautiful mountaintop area with incredible views of the town. The town is covered with twinkling lights and decorations while the snow covered streets create a picturesque set. Enjoy the lively Christmas markets where you can find unique gifts and indulge in some delicious local foods and drinks. The festive spirit is alive with fun filled winter activities such as skiing, snowboarding and sledding. Zakopane at Christmas is truly magical, charming and vibrant, making it the perfect holiday getaway. Poland is meant to be equally as impressive in the summer months, so I'm sure whatever time of the year you go, you'll have a fantastic time. So there you have it, our top five underrated countries that you should visit in Europe. We hope this video has helped and has given you some great ideas for your next trip. If you've got any questions about this video, please leave them in the comments. We love when you guys get involved. Also as well, if you've actually been to one of the five, let us know about your experience in that country. So if you liked the video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. And of course, if you want to see more travel videos like this, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell. So once again, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.